Hey guys, how's it going? Kraparian here. Crafting guide time. That's right, it's finally here. We took a little bit longer this time because, well, in Rise of Shadows, there's been a complete meta overhaul. Uh, all the decks are new, except maybe like one or two. There's so many new ones, there's so many new play styles. And more importantly, a lot of these decks offer a completely new game type. Um, you know, you have Muck Shaman, you have Big Paladin. You have a lot of these decks that just play differently than anything we've seen before and most of these decks are actually tier 2-ish. Tier 2 decks are just fine. Uh, tier 2 decks can become tier 1 decks if the meta switches around or if a new deck comes up and as a result of that I feel like more than ever if you just want to play one specific deck that you really like there's nothing wrong with crafting it. Um, I know a lot of the time we look at win rates, we look at card popularities, give you guys these crafting guides but more than any other time, if you really like what you're playing, maybe you should just do that instead of, you know, bumping up your win rate like 3%. With that aside, here are the 10 most influential cards of epic card rarity or higher that you should consider crafting um, during this meta. Now, you might not be interested in playing some of these classes, and as a result, you should probably skip the class cards. And you should also know that in these lists, I weigh the position in the set that we're on. I imagine people that watch these videos are very frugal with their dust. And as a result, uh, there's very few cards that I would ever consider that are released from a previous year, because those cycle out of standard a lot sooner, and if there are any cards in the classic and basic set that see a lot of play, I prioritize those in my crafting ranking. So here we go. Number 10, Waggle Pick. Now, Waggle Pick is a very good card. Uh, it is included in just about every road deck right now. The fact that you have a pretty strong weapon, the fact that you can search for these, these weapons, and the fact that, you know, a lot of rogue decks can heavily utilize the bounce effect makes Waggle Pick just the staple in the deck. Now, if you've looked at these rogue decks, a lot of the time you'll see that the play win rate of Waggle Pick is nothing too special. And I think that's a little bit deceptive because there is weapon searching for the card. You basically get waggle pick every single game. You guys know this already if you've played ladder. Every single rogue you'll ever play against will likely play waggle pick against you. So it's not one of the highest win rate cards in the deck because it just is the same win rate as the deck, basically. So, and that win rate's pretty good. Temper Rogue is one of the best decks right now, and there's a lot of like B tier rogue decks that are, uh, you know, they're there, they're tier two, they're tier three, they're climbing from time to time, and uh, of course those decks have waggle pick as well. Solid craft. Number nine, Magic Carpet. So Magic Carpet is used in a few decks, but namely just one. Carpet Lock, Zoo Lock, if you will, uh, does very well with Magic Carpet. You can run a ton of one drops playing Warlock because of the draw nature of the class's hero power. In addition to that, staples like the Giants, Siege giant, whenever you get that to one mana based on the number of minions on the board, you can actually give that a rush through magic carpet as well. Some real hidden gems with this card. The six health makes it kind of impossible to remove on turn three, so you're guaranteed some value. And more importantly, while Zulok certainly does extremely well in certain win brackets, it is the only deck that does exceptionally well against Token Druid, which basically has close to no other counters out there. So uh, magic carpet, it's going to be around for a while. Number eight is nine lives. So this is a hunter card that's used in any kind of death rattle deck. And honestly, most hunter decks are death rattle decks right now. Minions that are just naturally good to use in hunter just happen to have death rattle. Um, it is used in the mech hunter sometimes. Uh, if you're talking about the bomb mech hunter, the mech, mech hunter, like the death rattle one, it's obviously used in that. I've seen it used even in mid range hunters just to pop off a few key death rattles. It's even worth it if you think about if you have like, you know, a Savannah Hyman in the pool. It's just pretty good. It's really hard to see this card as not a very useful one ever in Hunter, so it's a pretty safe craft, especially if you love hunting. 
Number seven is Omega Devastator. This card is incredibly powerful. It is a card that is used in just about every single warrior deck, even warrior decks that don't have much in the way of mechs. It's great in mid-range because you can just play it on curve. It's great in control because you can just save it as long as you want and have that huge removal option. It's great even in Mechathune warrior lists because it's just a really OP card. And because it's a really OP card and doesn't quite shine too much as warrior as a whole is very good i don't see it getting nerfed anytime soon so if you love the card craft it now you're going to get lots of use from it number six is blast master boom now i hesitated to put this card on the list because this card is entirely contingent on bomb warrior being good and will bomb warrior be good you know in the next year and a half to come it looks like yes it looks like bomb warrior is it's a tier two deck right now but it is just about always in the top two spots of the tier two bracket so it's an extremely good deck uh, basically every part in the deck that every part in the meta right now at every rank it's going to be a top five deck bomb warrior that is it's just really hard to counter and it also prevents combo decks from popping up in the meta and what we've seen is with larger card pools as we can expect in the following expansions um combo decks become more popular and bomb warrior is actually likely to come back in a big way the reason i want to put blastmaster boom on this craft guide over the other bomb warrior cards is because it is the bomb warrior card i looked at the on play win rates so um, this is on hearthstone replay it's when the chance that you win the game if you play a specific card uh, blastmaster boom is the single non-finisher highest win rate on play card that means anytime you play blastmaster boom you're extremely likely to win that game now the only cards that beat it are like finisher cards you're talking about like pyroblast bloodlust savage roar of course those cards are going to have slightly higher because you typically only play those cards when you're about to kill your opponent now with blast Bast blastmaster boom you just play them for funsies whenever you have some bombs in your opponent's deck which really goes to show just the crazy power level of the card and i even identified it at blizzard hq when i first played bomb warrior whenever this card was played you'd like never lose those games and it turns out that's still pretty true on ladder today Number five, Elysiana. So Elysiana is a very good card. Um, it lets you basically play draw in your control deck. That's not something you should underestimate. Um, a lot of the time, control decks do very well in a specific meta, but when they match up against each other, it's this very confusing play style. It's this very confusing deck building, you know, dilemma where um, you need specific cards to actually win the control match. But if you have any kind of card draw, Draw, you will likely lose the control match because your opponent won't and you'll die to fatigue. Elysiana is kind of a fatigue prevention mechanic in combination with pandas or priest using seance as you've seen in the 60 card priest deck video. That was a good one, wasn't it? Um, it's possible to actually extend your deck at least another 30 cards using Elysiana with some other combos. Just an extremely powerful card and I don't see this card being useless anytime ever basically. Fourth is Van Cleef. That's right, we're into the classic cards. Van Cleef is seeing play in just about every rogue deck, and Van Cleef has seen play in just about every rogue deck in the past. So if you don't have a Van Cleef and you're playing rogue and you're like, man, I don't know if I want to craft Van Cleef because it's a class legendary. Honestly, it's as safe as it gets. You're probably playing rogue in the future, and Van Cleef is just so powerful. Um, the only thing that could happen to Van Cleef not seeing play is if it gets nerfed or hall of famed in which case you get your dust back so go ahead and craft it if you're playing rogue it's really a no-brainer number three is harrison jones so harrison has started to see a lot of play as most of the classes that are meta right now are playing weapons especially if you're playing a control deck especially if you're playing a combo deck it's very nice to have draw alongside your weapon removal it's also just very nice to have more weapon removal which is exactly what harrison accomplishes harrison is not really like a meta defining card but it is a neutral legendary from the classic set that ends up seeing play in about you know 40 to 50 percent of the metas that we have year round so you're gonna get a lot of use out of the card if you want to play a deck and it includes this you're thinking about crafting it just go for it 
Number two is Leroy. Leroy, I think, was maybe number one or number two in the last crafting guide video. The dude is just moving up. Um, with the game being more and more aggressive as the years roll out, and with the fact that Blizzard just does not print cards with charge anymore. Leroy just keeps getting that spotlight. Honestly, I think we're at a point where Leroy is due for another nerf, but until then, why don't you get the most use out of the card and reap that full dust reward when it does get nerfed or Hall of Fame. Leroy is one of the most solid crafts out there, except for number one, which is Ziliax. That's right. Ziliax, again, something I identified when I played the uh, pre pre release at Blizzard HQ. Um, I just played Ziliax in every single deck, and it was really good in every single deck. Every single deck that was any good played Ziliax. That's about it. Uh, Ziliax is a card that people don't really hate, yet it's played about twice as much as any other card in the entire game. So Ziliax is the most popular card in this meta by a factor of like two. So yes, it's a card that's not in the classic set, it's a card that wasn't just released right now. It is a card that will rotate out in the first expansion of the next year of 2020, whenever that might come. So if you're super frugal and you're concerned about that, that's fine. But I do think Ziliax is the core of a large number of decks being played right now. So it's a serious consideration. Let me know if you think I've missed any, but uh, I think this is a pretty solid list. So get crafty. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys in the next one.